Hello everybody, this is Bud Rich and in this video we will take a look at the new i3 4.20 release that uh, became available in the official Arch repositories today. So it's brand new, very cool, let's do this. Um, I have deleted my i3 configuration file so we can test everything in a plain i3 uh, environment here. So. Uh, that means I get this first configuration box, I will just, yes, generate the config, use Windows as the default modifier, thank you. Now, let's open Sublime. Hello. Uh, close all the tabs. So this is the default uh, automatically generated config file, I will just add this stuff here so we get some syntax highlighting correctly there and then I thought we can curl the release notes um, ah, that's right so many small things uh, that are not as I'm used to in the default state here I think I have the notes here from when I did the i3 from scratch videos didn't I add not go insane? <laughs> Maybe I didn't add that to this not a note thing. Whatever then. I will go insane from now on <laughs> then in this video. Because one, one thing is you can hold... Uh, yeah, I guess we can find it. Floating modifier mod1 save and then reload is mod shift c if i'm not mistaken in the default configuration there mod shift c that means mod shift c no no nothing works or now it works. Okay, okay. Yeah, it works. I I just clicked the wrong mouse button. Uh, whatever. Release notes. Two long-awaited features have been added. You can now use an include directive in your i3 config. You can now enable showing window icons in window title bars. Uh, there's also some difference in how the wallpaper is automatically set and the wallpaper now I actually I thought I disabled this but this is of course a wallpaper but if you don't set up a wallpaper with i3 you will just have a black background you know you have probably seen this the first time you tried i3 uh, but there were some issues with that uh, automatic black uh, wallpaper because sometimes it wasn't just a black wallpaper sometimes you could see uh, windows in that wallpaper because i3 used to work like this that it took a screenshot of of um, yeah the workspace basically before it started i3 itself and then it used that screenshot as the wallpaper which is a ridiculous way of doing this since if you have a window open when you take that screenshot that window will be part of the wallpaper and that that actually happens to me all the time but now that seems to be fixed now uh, and that's great and you can read about that stuff here uh, let's not go any further into that they have fixed that weird uh, uh, issue these are the two big uh, uh, additions here and they are quite big in the i3 sense so maybe we should just start with that i first thought that maybe i should just read all the changes here and stuff like that but let's let's do something so something happens you know uh, we got links here to the user guide so why not yank them and open a browser i guess uh, vivaldi stable thank you move it to workspace 2 we got a full screen browser kind of thing here for this uh, purpose here. Uh, window title icon is a new thing. It adds uh, an icon to the title bar. 
uh, and they have uh, a couple of examples on how to apply this functionality. We can try the first one here, which is using a key binding. Let's have this guy to three or something. Um, so copy that key binding. Save, reload the config, mod shift C. Now if I press mod P, it will execute the command title window icon on. Mod P. And there. We got a title window icon on. Vivaldi, mod P, title window icon on. Kinda looks weird in my opinion. But you can make it look a little bit less weird. Or it makes you think that you can do that, but it, it's, it will still look weird. Look at this. You can change the padding here because in my opinion, it, it, the icons are too large. Uh, so I thought maybe if I add this uh, title window icon padding 3px, it will look better, but it will not. We can add that there. Let, let's not enable that, but we can add this command here to the key binding. Let's add, uh, we can add a lot of padding just so you can see what it what it does here. So 15 pixels, uh, mod shift C, reload, and mod P. Now we got 15 pixel padding here, and that's 15 pixels to the left and to the right of the icon, but not above or below. That would, of course, break everything since uh, the title bar itself is only 20 pixels or something. Uh, but um, it doesn't change the size of, of, the, of the icon, it just adds like horizontal padding, making it still look just awkward. I don't know. Uh, in my opinion, the padding should apply around the icon, so it should, it should basically shrink the icon. Or maybe they could add like title window icon size, why not? 16 pixels or something, I don't know. Uh, or the ability to set the size. Whatever. Another weird thing with this is, as you can see, it uses here four window rules uh, to enable the setting. There is no setting you can do in, in, the, to the, in, in the configuration file. There is no like set title window icon yes or something like that. You have to... Or maybe maybe it does that here. Because here it say on and here it say yes, no. That's also weird that they use that. Uh, but I, th I, I don't think this will work. Uh, let's let's go back to workspace one. Let's set set it to off. We add that to the, to the key binding. That's another awkward thing is that you cannot toggle the, the the icons. You can just turn them on or off. Mod shift C mod P doesn't work. Mod P. Okay, maybe it's because this. Turns it on, save, uh, mod shift C, mod P, there, now it's off. Um, yeah, let's see if this works, I, I, I don't think so. Add title window icon, yes. Mod shift C. Yeah, that's an error. You cannot write that. You have to use it as a command to either a key binding or four window rules. So to apply this to all windows, we can use four window rules. And this is also a new feature, by the way. Uh, the all criteria, which of course uh, applies to all windows. So you don't have to write weird things like this or something like that, you know. I think that makes a lot of sense to add uh, the all criteria and, and it works whenever you can use window criteria it's not just for four window rules but I guess that's where it makes most sense uh, if we enable this four window all title window icon padding 3px uh, mod shift C doesn't enable any icons because four window rules you know you have to toggle the <laughs> you have to toggle the the um, window properties or change the window properties for example when the title of a window changes then it will apply that uh, for, uh, for window rules uh, because this window was not new to new windows it will apply it automatically I, I'm not sure if we can open what kind of application I could open here uh, maybe G 
color 2 should be a small fast program to open. Maybe that have an icon. Yeah, it has the GTK 2 icon here. Nice. Um, and that automatically have an icon now because we have the four window all rule set up. So that should work. But I also noticed that for, for example, uh, URXVT doesn't have an uh, icon and even if you try to force an icon with a key binding you will not get an icon for URXVT because URXVT doesn't really have an icon uh, on its own and there is no generic default icon for Windows that misses icons uh, which is I, or whatever I, I really don't care about this feature to be honest uh, I just think it looks weird kind of works here on the floating windows. The, the, this looks okay. And I guess you could use four window floating question mark. Does that work? Quit. Mon shift C. G color 2. Yeah, has an icon. Closing sublime. Mon shift Q. Mon return. Subble. No icon because it's not floating. So now it only applies here to floating windows. And yeah, I actually like that. I think I will actually add that to my configuration, maybe. Whatever. That's how the icon works and doesn't work. Um, next big feature here is um, include directive. So let's copy that link. paste it here it's the same page but different section uh, so include it means that in the configuration for i3 you can add this include and then the path to a file and then it will include that file and, and uh, yeah treat that as a part of the configuration um, as you can see it uh, tilde expansion works so you can use tilde for the home directory you can also use built or environment variables uh, and you can use wildcards, which is quite cool because that means that you can include multiple uh, uh, files with a single line. Uh, you can also use command substitution, so you can write uh, shell inside backticks like this uh, to include files if you want to. And also, I don't know why they have done this in, in the uh, documentation here using .conf, that doesn't matter, you, you can name the files whatever you want as long as they are valid i3 configuration files. Um, i3 loads each path only once, so including the i3 config itself will not result in an endless loop, but an error. Um, and here it also, this is, I didn't know about this, uh, I'm not sure if it worked like this before they added this functionality that you can use relative paths uh, in the config. So um, instead of writing include home.config i3, you know, this is the uh, configuration directory for i3 where this file, where, where the config file is located. Instead of writing that, you can just write the, the file name. I guess this was a weird example since it's this command substitution one, but it, it would apply to this as well. If you have a file called assignment in, um, in your uh, um, config i3 directory, you don't need to write the full path, you can just write the relative path. And that also works inside the files that you include, but, but then it will also change the relative path to be uh, uh, relative to the included file. Whatever. I think the best way to go is to just ignore this and always write full paths. Uh, it's probably a good idea, uh, actually. Because this is a bit confusing and yeah, whatever. So what does this really mean? What is it good for? Um, it is um, good because you can now divide your configuration into multiple uh, files and just include them. Uh, and that uh, that have different advantages. It's, it, it's really a matter of taste. If, if you prefer to have everything in a single file, here we have 200 lines or 
186 lines is the default I3B configuration. It, it's not the biggest config in the world. Uh, and of course, there is a lot of uh, comments in, in the default config. But uh, you might have a much larger configuration file. Maybe your config is 500 lines. It's not impossible to get a 500 line I3 config file. And then if you have that, it might be nice to divide it up in, into multiple files. So we could, could just try this here. Now, sure, my, if, boy, if we do this, cd config i3. So this is the my config directory. And as you can see, it's a bit messy. I have a bunch of temporary files and whatnot here. Um, but if we take this default config and then we can take, for example, the focus and move here or this yeah, move focus change focus yeah let's just take that cut open uh, we can call this uh, conf.d the directory and then we can say move and focus let's not add a, a, a um, Extend file extension. We can also use this syntax There all right now uh, the the focus Stuff is not part of our uh, default configuration here and if I press mod uh, um, Mod and J it should focus left because that's how i3 believes it should uh, behave you know so I'm pressing mod J here now. If I reload the config now mod shift C and press mod J again nothing happens or it actually just sends the J key here to sublime moving it downwards uh, because yeah J is down but <laughs> um, our key bindings are not part of the config anymore we wanted them to be part of the config since we have them in this conf.d directory we can just include, include that file now conf.d slash what did we call it move and focus save mod shift c reload and now mod j now it works now we have included this you can actually test this see if it is included uh, yeah, whatever we can do it here. I3 more version And then it will list all included files here. Uh, here you can see the default uh, file the main file It's called so dot config i3 config, but it have also included Dot config i3 conf the move and focus is also included So it will list all included files here. It, it can be quite useful to, to look at this output uh, if you <laughs> forget what kind of files you have included and here also I just told you that you shouldn't use relative paths but now I did so uh, I didn't specify the full path here we could write home bud dot config i3 this it's the same path it's the exact same path as they as written there and we can save we can load and it still works um, of course we could use tilde instead if you want to do that still works we can use the environment variable home reload still works and I wonder if this doesn't work also uh, xdg config home okay yeah that also works because that's an another environment variable available to i3 for example so there are a, a, i think you get <laughs> how it works um, but let's say we we add some more stuff to um, separate files like this so here we have yeah let's just take some random ones whatever take these uh, cut and then we add them to a new file we can call them random ones paste Syntax error there. Nice. Now we have two files here, and we can include both of them like this, and then we can do 
random ones. Save. Um, yeah, now we didn't test that it works or doesn't work. It's uh, float toggling. Okay, yeah, that's easy to test. Uh, mod shift C. Uh, mod shift space. Float toggle. It works even if this is uh, from from um, uh, this external or other file. And we can also see here that it have now three files included. Uh, just as they mentioned, you can also use uh, wildcards. So we could, instead of writing it like this, um, we could write it like this. Just put a wildcard there and then it will include all files in conf.d. Save, mod shift c, mod shift space, still works, mod shift mod j, moves focus. Nice! That's how include works here. But um, yeah, they, it's good. Let, let's take these ones uh, as the last ones here because this will show one of the limitations of, of this method. These are the workspace uh, related key bindings here and the variables. Uh, cut those, open uh, conf.the workspace. Workspaces save uh, syntax this is hash save. Um, I haven't reloaded the config, just a test here. Mod 2 brings me to workspace 2, of course. Mod 1 brings me to workspace 1. Mod shift C reload config. Mod 2 still works. We can move to the different workspaces. Um, but here it gets interesting, uh, because the workspaces, they use these variables here uh, in the default configuration to, to know which workspace to uh, focus. So WS1 is the uh, name of the variable containing just one here, so they are kind of useless in my opinion, but whatever. If we put these inside the config instead of having them in that file, we can test if this works. It will work. Uh, Mod 2, it still works. Neat. But what if we do the other way around? Um, so we have the variables in the include file, but we have the key bindings uh, in a different file, in, in this case in, in the normal i3 file. Save, mod shift, or maybe oh, whatever we do it like this. Mod shift C, reload the config. See, we don't get any errors anywhere or anything, but it, now it doesn't work. Mod 2, nothing happens. Mod 3, nothing happens. Doesn't work now. Uh, or what it actually does, it does fire the key bindings here, but these variables doesn't expand to anything. It, uh, I3 have no idea what to expand this variable to, because the variable is declared in an external configuration. You have to... You can either do it like this, if you have variables in one of these files that you include, that's fine if you declare them and then use them in the same file. That's fine. It's also fine to declare the variables in the top main configuration, like this. And I think even this will work, and this is also interesting. I'm, I'm not sure, I haven't tested this, but I think it will work, because now we include uh, the workspace file here, but we declare the variables here. But I still think it will work, uh, but I'm not 100% sure. Uh, mod 2. Yeah, it works. Because it have this somewhat awkward way of doing this. Uh, it parses each configuration individually. Uh, it, it, it's, uh, it's detailed uh, in this uh, read or in the documentation here a li little bit more. Um, but shortly here, it doesn't do this. It doesn't construct one big configuration file and then just parse that. Instead, it parses each file individually um, for whatever reason, I don't know. But that's how it works. And that is the main disadvantage of this method, uh, that you might get weird uh, uh, behavior regarding variables. And as you could see, it didn't. Uh, we didn't get an error, in, at least not in this case. I, I, I think it depends on what kind of variables you have uh, in the files and not. 
Um, or one rule of thumb uh, could be to only declare variables in the de in the top config, the main config. Uh, then it should be fine. Like this is another variable, you know, mod4 uh, is mod. Uh, let's also change the font. Ah, um, ah here is this also. XDG auto start dex. I, I'm not sure what dex is. Whatever. Hey, they are linking to Arch Linux wiki in, in the default configuration of i3. Just a testament on that the Arch wiki is the Linux desktop Linux official manual. Everyone knows that. Uh, all right, maybe we should get back to the release notes. Let's curl them again. I, I just don't want to scroll up or maybe we should save save some bandwidth. <laughs> uh, but those are the big, big uh, kahunas here. Uh, include and icons. I could go on a tangent here and talk about why I don't like include either, but whatever, let's not do that. That is how it works. I think I can figure out how it works what it can be used for. Then it explains this uh, stuff here about that wallpaper stuff. It's It just works now. And then we have some more uh, changes um, in this list. Use dex for xtg auto start. And that is what I just uh, highlighted there. I'm not really sure what it does, but I guess it, or whatever. <laughs> I, I actually don't know what it is. And it seems to, automatically do this yeah or whatever whatever I, I, I don't intend to, to okay let's look it up then let's go to our if, if it was some other page than arch wiki I would never open it but now I, I trust it. But what is this nothing xdg auto start the xdg auto start specification defines a method for auto starting ordinary desktop entries on desktop environments startup and removable medium mounting by placing them in specific directories. You need to use either a desktop environment that supports it or a dedicated implementation like for example DEX or system D XDG auto start generator. Those are the only two that are not in AUR here. Let's look at this, this DEX guy. Let's look at this Dex guy. Let's look at this Dex guy. Desktop entry execution. Let's look at this Dex guy. Gah! <laughs> okay, I guess they have the man page here. There. Uh, Yeah, whatever. This is probably a good idea. I, I'm not even sure I have this. Sorry, installed. Uh, there. Ah, I do. I do. Not sure who brought it here, but it is here. Whatever. Dex is now used. That's one of the changes. Probably good. Probably a good idea. It probably sets up stuff like these XDG automatic environment variables and stuff like that correctly. It's it, it's probably a good idea. Um, another sh big change here. <laughs> I'm sarcastic. This is so weird why it's almost even included in the in the uh, change log here. But they have added something to the to the documentation about scratchpad state. Nice. Um, this one, I couldn't really uh, get this. I, I wanted to get this working, but I couldn't figure out how to do it because the IPC is so awkward to work with in its raw state. But uh, we can quickly, very quickly, uh, open the IPC documentation here. Uh, there. And let's see, get the config. There it is. This, I think they have changed this, so, so it, you are supposed to be able to get information about the config 
in this format. I think this this is brand new, but I couldn't. I, I tried not that much, but I tried a little bit to to, to uh, get this output myself. But I couldn't figure out how to, how to do that. But if you are a, a, a IPC wizard, you can probably do that. So that's a, they have changed this config uh, stuff here. You might think that can't you just use i3 message and then get config? Yeah, you can do that, but you get the exact same thing as you did uh, prior to this uh, release here. Uh, because what they say here is that uh, the get config request now returns all included files and their details, but this doesn't do that, it just prints the, the content of the loaded main uh, configuration file and it have even have the include statements in in this uh, yeah here we can see it include this is what's printed with this command so i'm not sure maybe they haven't uh, updated um i3 message because that's a, a like a separate command not really related to the i3 window manager or it is related but it's different things and uh, maybe they will change this uh, get config or add more stuff to it here in i3 message but at, at the moment it's not there i think you have to you have to kind of be a ipc library developer in a way to to make use of this and we will probably see support for this new reply in in uh, the ipc libraries uh, hopefully soon but I have, I'm not sure if they have added it to, like, for example, Python, i3, IPC, Python, IPC, whatever. And I couldn't figure out how to do it. I tried to use this Perl stuff here, this stuff. I could get this running and it, I managed to, to send the exit command here. And, but I couldn't get that JSON stuff. I, I, I don't know how it works. Whatever. But it's something that is part of this new release. Um, Nag bar, no one cares. I3 bar, no one cares. I3 D menu desktop, no one cares. I3 dumplog f now uses Unix sockets instead of p threads. Uh, Unix socket approach uh, should be more reliable and also more portable. So I guess that's good, but uh, I, I had no idea about this command even that there existed a command called i3 dumplog and that command also have the f option which usually stands for follow and that is also the case here and it is kind of a neat little command here uh, let's just quickly 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 look at it open the terminal do i3 dumplog and there you see it print some weird stuff like this but if you use it with the F option then things get funky and um, maybe it stands for funky I'm not sure but now uh, it will keep on listening for events here so if I open a new terminal for example boink, we get lots of weird output here uh, and now I'm, I'm trying to scroll the output upwards but every time I do scroll it also sends uh, print stuff regarding the scroll and stuff like that but this can be probably interesting for those who want to ha hack or for those who are hacking on the i3 source code since it do refers to all the actions and events and stuff to uh, the location in the actual source and this is quite readable output here even if it's weird i, I didn't know about this at all and it is um, um, mind blown <laughs> and I guess now they are using Unix sockets instead of p-threads, so that's great. Maybe. I don't know. I don't even know what the difference is, or I kind of do, but whatever. When clicking on a tab, focus its child, like when scrolling, or if already focused, focus the tab container. This is for fake news, or it is actually not fake news, they have just phrased it kind of awkward here. Uh, because it doesn't work as it say here, but it do work uh, as they say here. Wh whatever, L check this out. If I press mod W, then we all of a sudden have a tabbed container here. Um, then we open a new terminal. And then we move th that terminal to the right. Uh, like this. 
And now that is outside of the tabbed container here and we have this one. But <laughs> for this to work we have to put the tabbed container <laughs> in another tabbed container I believe. Uh, so if we make this there and now we create a new terminal and move that one to the right as well. There, now I can <laughs> show you how this works. Uh, now we have lost the release notes here. Um, here it is. Uh, when clicking on a tab, focus its child. What they actually mean is when you click on the tab group tab, like this, it focuses its child, the focus child, which is this. It's, it's the one that had focus last, you know. So clicking here, now it should focus sublime. And it does. Uh, this is not how it used to be, because it used to be like this. When you click this, this happened. It focused the whole group. As you can see, it does that now as well, but it first focuses the child. The first time you, you click on it, it just focuses the child container, sublime in this case. If you click it again, it, it focuses the whole group. And before this update, it always focuses focused the whole group. And that was kind of annoying. Um, especially if, if you... I guess it works now like this as well. If I move the focus to the uh, uh, left here... It doesn't work. To the right, yeah, that works. To the left... Or is it H? No. Well, okay, yeah, yeah, okay. You see, it works. This didn't work before. If you move the focus to the left here, for example, then it would focus that whole uh, group, and that was kind of annoying. Uh, now it doesn't do that anymore. It goes into the group and focuses that. I, I, I am a big fan of this. Uh, feature so really glad to see that it's like a small little thing that just makes everything feel uh, better a nice nice uh, nice polish all right uh, that is what that is about so so it's in my opinion it should say when clicking on a tab group tab or something like that but whatever that is how it works <coughs> Implement include config directive. Implement showing icons. We have looked at that. Nice. Allow for window to match against WM client machine. That's weird. What is that? Add percentage machine placeholder uh, in parentheses WM client machine to title format. Uh, so um, that means that we can add this machine secret variable to title format. I, I'm not sure how many people are using title format and, and know uh, how it works in i3. It's like a separate little thing. I use it all the time, by the way. Uh, it's uh, kind of neat. You can set custom titles without modifying the, the window properties themselves. So you don't change the actual window title. You just change uh, the display title, what is displayed here in the title bar. So if we change the title format for this window to something, it does that. Now this window is just called something here, but it is actually the actual title of this window is still URXVT. And we can display that actual title by saying percentage title. And now it's a URXVT. Um, we could also do, I guess, Class question mark. Yeah, then you say see we have URXPT with uppercase U R here because that's the, that is a class name uh, But now we can also use this new variable called machine and Then it say tipa and that is the host name so uh, cat Etsy host name your, your host name is probably something different just execute this command cat Etsy host name there it prints Tipa because it's my ThinkPad, whatever. Um, so you can use that in title formats and you can also use uh, WM Client Machine, which is the host name. You can use that uh, with four window rules. I'm also not sure here if you can use it as, as a criteria uh, uh, um, 
for other things than for window rules. Um, because then that would... I kind of see a use case for this if you are uh, having windows that belong to different hosts uh, for some reason in, in some way. And then you could set up a key binding that applies to all windows uh, on that host and just, for example, send them to the scratchpad or send them to a different workspace or something like that. Whatever. It's something you can do now. It's, it feels like a fringe thing, but uh, those who need this are probably very happy. Uh, move container or workspace to output. Uh, you can now toggle a workspace or container uh, between also container or workspace, workspace or container between multiple outputs uh, when multiple output names are specified. <clears throat> I think this this looks like a really good feature as well. I haven't tested it, but I'm sure it just works as it is advertised here. Uh, what it means is that you can add uh, a key binding. Let's, let's close the thing, whatever. We can now add a key binding. Let, let's just make a dummy key binding here. Um, and we could say um, mod shift D, and then we can say move container to output, and then the name of the output. And the name of the output, uh, one way to find out is to use x render, lists out the uh, information about your, your currently connected and disconnected available monitors. So I have EDP1, that is the built in laptop. Uh, display and I also have DP2-2 which is the external uh, uh, monitor so that means that we can um, and, and you were able to do this uh, prior to this release this command move container to output uh, DP2-2 for example that would always move the current container to that monitor uh, but now you can also add, now you can add multiple monitors to, to this uh, command. So DP1. Uh, now we have two monitors here, and that means it will toggle between those the monitors in this list. You could also some people have like six different monitors uh, connected, and maybe you don't want to tog toggle between all of them, only one a set of them, and then, then you could do something like this. So that's cool. But they added that. Uh, I haven't tested it as I mentioned, but I think that is exactly how it works. And you can also change this to workspace and then it will move the current workspace instead. Um, related is also that uh, you can also write next and that is new as well. So you can instead of writing a list like this, then you can just add next and then it will toggle between the, the available uh, uh, outputs. Um, so, I don't know, I, it sounds like a great feature. Uh, it, I, I very seldom use uh, multiple outputs or monitors myself, but if I was, I would be glad that they have added this. It, it sounds neat. Um, next, add all window matching criterion. Yes, this is a new. Okay, so criterion, it's, criterion is such, such a weird word. I always thought, or always, but I, I thought the, the singular uh, uh, version of this word was criteria, but maybe that is the plural, I'm not sure, whatever. Uh, we have already used this, I think, maybe, maybe not, uh, here. This will apply to all windows, that's, that's a new thing, you can use this all criterion and that, that's nice um, why not have that acquire the WM underscore capital S underscore N selection when starting as required by ICCCM no idea really what it means but I think it is related to like clipboard and selection and stuff like that because I noticed now when I started i3 here in this default configuration. We can look at my xinit here, I probably have it here somewhere. Uh, uh, 
here it is and the x in it mm, yeah this is my x in it so I, I, I doesn't start anything really I just uh, uh, load the default x in it uh, configurations and uh, merge x resources set up some environment variables uh, and then if it's i3 plane I do this start your xvt daemon, uh, start simple screen recorder, set the work, wallpaper, remove the, the config and start i3. Uh, but even if I did, that's all I did, I still see that this little idiot here is in the system tray, which is a clipboard manager, uh, Parcelite. And I actually never use this, uh, so I guess I should uninstall it but uh, I didn't even know that I ha had it installed because I never see this icon uh, but it seems like it somehow started this now and I think that is related to WM underscore capital S lowercase n <laughs> but I'm not sure it might be have something to do with that whatever who cares uh, add long option replace command line argument this is not a command line option this is called a flag uh, and I guess that this added to i3 command itself uh, yeah there it is so i3 long option replace will uh, uh, excuse me there, oh, okay, so so annoying. Well, I have the key binding mod R to toggle the recording, but that's also the key binding for i3 that toggles the resize mode, but whatever. Uh, but replace here, that uh, uh, replaces an existing window manager. I haven't tested this, but it, it sounds quite interesting, you know. It, I imagine it working like this in, in best case uh, scenarios here. Uh, imagine you start XFCE, you know, normal XFCE desktop environment, and then you have i3 installed, but it's not running, and then you just fire up i3 dash dash replace, and that automatically just changes the window manager uh, while, while still having XFCE, for instance, <coughs> running, uh, and only replaces the window manager, so you still have the rest of, of the XFCE, for example. Uh, working and running but I have no idea if it works like this like that or or if it works at all uh, it feels like there are a lot of, of <laughs> uh, things that have to be correctly set up for this to, to actually work but I, I I don't know maybe maybe not because I wonder if whatever let's not just sit here and guy guess how this works uh, it, it probably works uh, and I think it works like that and then the last change here is notify system D when i3 is ready, allowing other services in a system D user session to use i3 as a dependency. And I think that you think that I will now say whatever, but I actually think this is great. Uh, and let's let's um, talk a little bit more about this specific feature here. Uh, because I remember when this was added to uh, i3. God damn it! Now we probably got borked out. Hello, Vivaldi. This happened before. And then it just started working again. There, now it started working again. <laughs> Whatever. I'm not sure. There's something weird with browsers and multiple workspaces. I never get issues with a browser uh, when I have it on the same workspace as I'm always. But when I switch workspaces, it sometimes works out. I'm not sure if I'm the only one with these issues, but excuse me again. Okay, sorry for that. It's my annoying neighbors um, <laughs> being annoying. Whatever. Um, i3, i3 uh, thing here, i3 all github, well there it is, i3, i3, go to pull requests, let's find that pull request uh, where that feature was added, so we look at the closed ones, and it was a while ago here, uh, uh, oh, there it is. 
so this, uh, the reason I wanted to open this is because Vincent, uh, the guy who made this pull request, uh, explains quite uh, well here uh, why this is uh, beneficial to, to add this functionality. Uh, so with this in place, you can use i3 as a dependency uh, for in system D. So you can have a, a, a target, uh, the unit uh, or system D unit that uh, says uh, I require i3 socket, for example, here. Uh, and you couldn't do that before, and that meant that you you couldn't. Uh, <laughs> Uh, have i3 as a dependency, and it is a dependency, you know, if you want to use system D to manage your graphical session, your uh, X session, for example, and you want to use i3 as the window manager. You know, there are some programs that you cannot start uh, af before you know that i3 is started and stuff like that. So it kind of broke that uh, that thing to be able to have system D as a as a graphical X org uh, session manager or whatever, and you might wonder why would you what whatever, right? Why would you do that? But the thing is, I I am actually doing this right now. I, I have been using system D as a X org uh, session manager for for about a month or something here, and I have to say it's great. It's it's very very nice. Um, I will, it's completely out of scope for this video, but I know that Vincent here, the guy who made this pull request, he also wrote uh, a very good article on his blog uh, about how this can be set up. Uh, now Vivaldi froze again. Something is off. And I'm quite sure it has something to do with... You see, this is Workspace 2, this is Workspace... But here we have... We, now it just works. Something is weird. I had the same issues with uh, Qt browser, by the way. So it's not. There is something weird. Uh, maybe it's. Uh, I should probably try Firefox actually for a while uh, and see if I get the same issues. And it's only when I have the browser on a different workspace. When I'm using uh, my normal uh, configuration with i3 FIDA, everything on the same workspace, and even toggling uh, uh, the browser between the scratch pad and back, never any issues. But as soon as I do this with multiple workspaces, things get weird. All right, so enough of the side cracks, but what, what can you do, you know? Here, um, Vincent wrote this very very nice article about the, his uh, experience with i3 as the window manager which he claims to just have switched to I'm, I'm not sure if that is true because they have a very complicated setup and he seems to know a lot about how it works um, and it's such a great write-up he, he both explains like the basics how what the i3 window manager really is about the tree layout and stuff like this in one of the best uh, ways uh, I've seen this explained, but uh, most of the article is about his own additional, he calls it i3 companion. Uh, I call my stuff i3 as, you know, but in, in a way it's it's like uh, uh, similar things. But he does it in a completely different way using Python as a, ma uh, uh, as a big uh, uh, background process Python thing that he uh, uses to uh, as a middleman between the i3 IPC and, and stuff like that. It's very inspiring and, and cool stuff that he uh, showcases here. Um, but the thing that really stuck with me was this part here. He uses System D as a service manager, and he quickly explains how it works here. <laughs> very quickly. Uh, you can actually uh, uh, find out uh, a more focused uh, article by a different person, uh, Michael uh, Goral here, uh, how to use System D for X sessions. Uh, it's not a long article and it's uh, really easy to understand this. And believe me, it, it is great to do this. Uh, uh, it really is. And I will make a video on, on this because it is also quite uh, complex if you want it to be, and I kind of do. Uh, but the, the, the thing is, yeah, we, we take that in a different video, but this is good stuff. Um, you can also, of course, um, 
find Vincent's uh, dot files. Uh, this is his X session file, which is basically Xinit uh, on Debian, I believe. Uh, but they also have uh, the systemd configuration here, so you can look at how he has set it up. I, I have uh, copied a lot of this stuff into my own settings. Whatever, this got even better now with his uh, pull request applied. It was possible to do all of this, as I just said, that you couldn't use i3 as a dependency for in systemd. But there were a workaround that uh, Vincent had figured out. It was to, uh, if you had uh, uh, systemd units that depended on i3, you could start those units from i3 itself. So this is uh, from the i3 uh, configuration file. You start a, a systemd target, and target, that means it's a collection of the services, so it's, it, it, it can include multiple uh, 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 services. I guess we could quickly see that here. Uh, there, i3 session target. So all of these depended on i3 being started. For example, this i3 companion, which is this Python script and stuff like that. And this target file, it is started from the i3 configuration itself. And that, if you do it like that, then you can use i3 as a dependency in systemd. But it means that you have to, the configuration is become split up into the window manager configuration and stuff like that. With this new pull request, uh, you don't need to add anything extra to the uh, uh, um, i3 config like this. And, uh, this is a bit of a hack, you know. It's much. It actually makes a big difference for for this kind of setup, uh, because one of the benefits with using systemd like this session management thing is that you could easily replace any component, even i3 itself, and that make that becomes even more easy and and streamlined now when everything is in the systemd configuration. Um, I'm quite excited about that. Uh, functionality as well. I haven't tested it, but I'm sure it works. Uh, then there are some bug fixes. i3 bar, i3 bar, i3 bar, I don't care. IPC, return proper signed integer for container positions. Negative values were returned as large 32 bits uh, integers. I think this is something that I have noticed that sometimes I get got weird uh, uh, position values from Windows. And apparently it was related to when they were uh, on a negative position, meaning that they were to the left of, of the main uh, uh, output and stuff like that. Whatever. Uh, initializing new outputs, avoid duplicating workspace numbers. I never encountered that uh, issue, but apparently they have fixed it, so that is probably good. Fix workspaces not moving to assign output after output has become available. I, I didn't even know this was a thing that you wanted this, but now it is. Uh, in my mind, it, it sounds a bit weird, uh, but maybe whatever. I, I never use assigned uh, outputs and stuff like that, or maybe I do, whatever. Yeah, I actually do that, so whatever. Fix. Now when I think about it, this is probably exactly what I want. Now I don't have to do that. Yeah, whatever. Uh, fix duplicate bind code after i3 config wizard. Not sure what that was about, but it's fixed now. Uh, fix commented out trophy call in default i3 config. Whatever. Clear pix map before drawing to pre prevent visual garbage. I'm not 100% sure what it means, but it is probably good. Fix crash with layout default. No idea what, it, what that crash was about, but it's fixed. Send an output event on XRender 1.5 monitor configuration change. No idea what that means. Um, thanks to every um, contributor to this release listed here. Uh, thanks to Mikkel Stapelberg, uh, who created this amazing window manager more than 10 years ago now. Um, or what is it, 12 years ago? I think he's, he started working on it like 2008, 2009, something like that. Um, and it is really now the tiling window manager. I was a bit worried about this release uh, because I have followed, uh, as you can see there, I, I know about the different pull requests. I read every single pull request and, and try to figure out what they will do. I never try anything. I wait till the release is out there. 
but I'd like to keep an eye on, on uh, the pull request here. Um, and I was worried uh, about this release because there have been a lot of pull requests and different components being changed and stuff like that. And I thought this list would be so much larger uh, than it actually is here. But now when I see it written like this and when I have uh, investigated what the different things that have changed are and stuff like that, it feels great and it feels like a, it just feels like a normal i3 release. Even if these two are quite large in, in the i3 sense, like adding a new config directory that completely changes how you can structure the config file, it's not backwards compatible at all. It, it really breaks the statement or announcement that the i3 maintainers went out with about a year ago, saying that they would not add any new behavior and then they do something like this doesn't really add up, but it doesn't matter. I, I never thought they would stick to that. Um, but maybe even more so is this uh, show icons. That's that's really... I didn't see that one coming, but it did. <laughs> and I, I did, don't really... I really don't care about it. They, they could just as well not have included this, any of these two. Uh, and it would still be a great release. Uh, one of the best in, in, in a while. Uh, because there are some, I really like these uh, small polished things like clicking the tab group uh, kind of works now and uh, stuff like that and this moving containers to to output next, stuff like that is, is just great. So it's been my favorite, uh, one of, my favorite window manager by far, i3wm. It's on, on, on uh, my top top five list of favorite applications. Maybe top three even. Uh, I really like it. It's a great program. I don't have any plans on changing Window Manager. Uh, and um, I can't wait <laughs> till next year when we get to do a new uh, video like this and see what crazy new features they will add to i3. But um, hopefully we will make a lot more Bud Lab videos in between. Thank you for watching everybody. Uh, have a great day. Bye.